We are back. Week three of the Road to the Derby. Uh, not the best of luck last week. Uh, Caleb and I both faded the heavy favorite. The horse ended up winning. Um, we got a horse up to place. But otherwise, uh, any thoughts coming out of that race, Caleb? Yeah, I think we took a good shot against Newgrange in the Southwest. Uh, he, he was just too good for that field, which is kind of how it looked on paper. But uh, no shame. You got your pick to run second. I think my long shot and pick uh, and then top pick both hit the board, ran you know, third and fourth or fourth and fifth. So uh, no regrets taking a shot there. I'm Andrew Capone from Who's Got the Action. Caleb Knight joining me today from <clears throat> uh, from taking a stand. We're going to be taking a look at three different stakes races coming up this week in three different formats. We're going to start off first with the Withers at Aqueduct. Uh, amazing field at Aqueduct. We got Winter Duck here, field of 11 going one and one eighths a mile for the Withers. Uh, this is going to be the last 10 point derby prep in New York before uh, we get to the, the, the Gotham and then eventually the Wood. Um, so we're going to take off running through the quick uh, numbers here and then we'll take a look at our picks. So, number one on the rail, Constitution Law. Davis leaves town to take a better mount in Gulfstream Park. Uh, the morning line looks a little too short for me. Mud experience may help here. But uh, I'm definitely going to step away and not be playing this horse, especially in the 72 area. What do you think of the two, Caleb? Yeah, Grantham's a bit of a wild card in this field. Is uh, he ran okay in his debut on dirt, and then they put him on synthetic, and he gets the job done. Uh, he did have a little bit of trouble in that start, uh, where he stumbled out of the gate. I'm just a little bit curious looking at this horse if he really might just be better on the turf or the all-weather surface. And this feels like a real ambitious place to try to take a shot with uh, the Grade Three withers. So. Uh, probably not one I'll be backing, but certainly a wild card in this field. What'd you think of the three? Yeah, so smart enough. This is a horse I actually did like. I know that some of the parks form uh, may be a little bit dubious, and some people are going to question that a little bit. But I thought that he really franked that form when he came out to run the drone last out. January 1st was a day at Aqueduct where it was very, very difficult to make up ground. The track was an absolute swamp. And I thought he made a really nice run in that race to go from last to second. And he was flying late. So this is a horse that I'm actually very interested in in this race. What would you think of the number four on Gilded Age? He's another one Look, that looks interesting. Looking at the four here, Gilded Age, uh, definitely interests me. I'm going to talk about a little bit later. One of two $600,000 horses in this race. Closer on a wet track. Anything can happen. Kendra Carmuse gets the mount. Uh, reminds me a little bit of last year's wood, this sort of pace setup that's looking. Uh, I think we could see a horse flying at the end. Um, if the pace shows like it is on form, could see a little bit of a melt up front. Horse can maybe step up to pick up pieces. Mod off the layoff, 26% strike right now. Um, he really knows how to give him a rest and then bring him back, so I'm definitely interested there. The five, uh, Cavassier, figures are there. Winner of the Jerome comes back to continue on the derby trail through Naira. Uh, one big red flag that, that stood out to me is Jose Ortiz hop off. Uh, you don't really see that often that a, a jockey hops off a horse that has a points already towards the derby. Um, horses one for one out of Chad Brown Barn. Uh, just the only red flag for me there is going to be Jose taking off for a different mount. Uh, who'd you, uh, would you think of the six? Yeah. Unbridled bomber, the six horse here. I uh, wouldn't say that he's without hope completely. Uh, he's another one that was in that January first race where again, speed was a big advantage that day. He wasn't able to close quite as well as, uh, smarten up the number three, but he did make a, a respectable run. And you know, there's a chance that he maybe just didn't really care for the off track as he did score his win over a fast surface, but I think if I'm going to take a closer, there's others in this field I'd prefer. No need to worry. The seven is another horse that appears to do his best running late, and he's another park shipper, actually. Uh, this is a horse that I really do think is kind of up against it in here. He's gone up against number three, Smart in Time, twice at parks and couldn't get within 10 lengths of that runner in either of the two tries that he went up against him. Uh, I don't think he's going to be able to turn the tables on that foe who – probably isn't even uh, one of the top contenders in this race anyway. So don't think I'll be going for no need to worry, but you'll get your price if you think that horse has any run. What do you think of number eight, uh, Unoho? Unoho, first of all, I was lost on the pronunciation of the name, and I'm lost on this horse completely. Uh, hottest jockey in the colony right now, Trevor, clipping 19%. Dutch, up for Dutch Row for tw at 23%. This New York bred might have a shot here. Uh, coming from different, more of a protected area, his, his last classes. Uh, my one fear here is the mile and an eighth. I don't know if the horse wants to stretch out. Um, it could be interesting. 
I, I just this horse is one that I'm going to take a second look at as we get closer to the gate and, and I get a better understanding of those odds. Um, the number nine, early voting, Jose takes the mount for Chad. He worked the horse early last week. He came back up from New York, back up to New York to work the horse. Um, the pet has the distance all day long. Gunrunner baby, they're the hottest babies this year. Um, this forward placement, especially with a little bit of bias that we've seen here, it definitely interests me. And uh, one thing that I, I've definitely taken away is when we take a look at the bias report, uh, we're seeing the last 12 races, you know, 75%, uh, almost 85% of them are won on the outside of the track. The rail is deader than dead at Aqueduct. They haven't been able to work it better since all this rain we've had in the Northeast. Um, so I definitely think it's interesting to see what's going to happen uh, with those, those placements and we see how, how the track runs after it's getting rain today in New York and then rain again tomorrow. Um, so definitely looking for a horse on the outside of the track. This horse should be forwardly placed, so it's definitely going to be helped by that wire-to-wire -wire bias. Uh, what did you think of the 10 and 11? Yeah, so I can't say I was too interested in either one of the 10 or the 11. Mr. Jefferson, the 10, uh, he came into the, the New York circuit with some pretty respectable laurel form. The form looks a little better if you toss those turf races where he just clearly wasn't on the right surface. But he's had two cracks against the New York company now and has just come up pretty empty in both of those starts. I don't really see him being able to turn it around against this field. I think he's just taking advantage of some weaker fields at Laurel. So probably not too interested in Mr. Jefferson. Cook Creek, I would give a second look to, and I wouldn't really talk anybody off of this horse, but he was the 7-5 to five favorite last out in the Jerome after running second in the Nashua to a Bob Baffert trained Rockefeller. Uh, however, he really just was pretty clearly second or third best in that race um, in the Jerome. He, had a good trip. He was wide on a day when you, you wanted to be, you know, a little bit off the rail with the way the track was playing. He was relatively forwardly placed and he just kind of came up flat. Uh, it's possible he didn't care for the track, although you would think that looking at his pedigree, he's supposed to like an off track. So this is a horse that I think Price will be my guide. Uh, I, I wouldn't mind him at, you know, six to one, eight to one. But if he takes any money, then I wouldn't want to take a very short price on this horse. Yeah, and that's our field of 11 for the Withers at Aqueduct uh, tomorrow, 425 first post. Just before we get into our picks and our long shots here, just looking at this field, talk about great winter racing. You know, people have been talking about Gulfstream's championship meet and, and winter racing in the Northeast is gone. We have 11 foes taking the track here uh, for the road to the Derby, and, and it's been full fields the last two or three weeks. So winter racing in New York is back. Um, so, so let's take a look at this, Caleb. Uh, who's your top pick here? Yeah, a very fun race here. Uh, I don't know that we have our future Kentucky Derby winner in this field, but it's a great betting race. And I'm actually making a bit of a long shot my top pick here, one that I, I know you also have some interest in as well. The number four horse, Gilded Age. So this is a horse that truly is a one-run closer. So he's going to be a bit against the track profile and going to need a little bit of help up front. But I really thought he just hasn't had the right setups in most of his races you know, if you go all the way back to his debut race, Bill Mott, not really known for winning first out. And this is a horse that clearly wants every inch of ground he can get. So that sprint race was never really a place he was going to be successful. And then in his next couple of routes, he just got stuck behind some really slow paces. I mean, he's trying to close into 49 and change going a mile and a 16th at Keeneland and Churchill. A really tall task against some pretty good foes. I mean, giant game, call me midnight. Rattle and roll. I mean, we've seen you know two of those horses go on to win stakes races. The giant game was third in the Breeders' Cup Juveniles. So those are some pretty good foes. He, he finally gets the blinkers on last start. And I think that did make a bit of a difference. He was able to get into the race a little bit earlier and really won going away really impressively there. So I like Gilded Age. Bill Mott's actually pretty good when going with maiden last out winners into graded stakes races. It's not a move he does super often, but when he throws him into the deep end of the pool like this, it usually means he has a horse that he has some confidence in. Uh, I hope Kendrick gets this horse a little bit more aggressive and keeps him a little more mid pack instead of trailing at the very back of the field. But if he can get any sort of an honest pace ahead of him, I think Gilbert age could be really dangerous in this spot. What do uh, you think, about Andrew? It's a, it's a great feeder, and I'm going to do it in reverse order. I'm going to do my long shot play first, just to continue on with Gilded Age. Um, Dead Nuts closer in the field, with a field with a lot of speed signed up. Uh, Kendrick Carmouche can set the trip here. I think you're going to get that more aggressive ride that, that you're looking for out of him. That's just his riding style. Um, if they can run off in, in 45 and change like they did in the same times in the Jerome, um, and the way this track is playing, 
with the front end uh, a little bit getting more difficult. We see a little bit more moisture in the track. The inside rail is done. Uh, I definitely think this could be one of those races where you see that melt on the front end and uh, one run closers have the opportunity here. And there's about three or four other closers in the field that are, are, are not one run, but, but pretty deep closers. And I, I think their, their form is just not in the same ballpark as Gilded Age. So Gilded Age will be my long shot play here. Um, I know it's your top pick. It is my long shot play. For my top pick, I'm going with uh, early voting. Early voting outside of the track where you want to be. It's been a merry-go-round anytime somebody's just stayed out there. Um, you cannot be on this rail. Forwardly pushed momentum should help it with the weather expected. It's not a sexy pick. The price isn't going to be amazing. I just think when Chad puts horses in positions like this, coming at one for one, made in special weight, coming into something like this, I really think this horse is going to uh, to get out front, stay clear. And, and this is going to be one of those races where at the end of the race, the, the horse is completely clean. Uh, and that's how you know it won is because it, it really didn't get that kickback. So you're, you're, Top pick is a little bit of a long shot. Then who is your long shot? Um, you know, so my top pick is a long shot. And by, by no means am I really against early voting. Uh, I guess if I had to pick a, a second long shot in here, it would actually probably be the number three, Smarten Up. So this is a horse that I'm not really sure what his best run style is. He made a big late closing move in the Drome. Uh, again, on a day when I said it was, it was pretty tough to make up ground, I thought that was a really strong race. But if you look at the race prior to that, he stalked the pace and won by daylight uh, in that maiden race at Parks. Uh, the race prior to that, he also sort of pressed the pace. But then in his debut, he was a dead closer. So I don't really know uh, where this horse is best. Maybe he's just very versatile. But I think ideally I'd like to see something in the middle. I, I don't really know that I want him on the lead dueling it with early voting. But I would really don't want him to be at the back of the pack either. I mean, it's probably going to fall to one of the other closers. So I think that, you know, this horse does make some sense. I thought that he kind of proved that that Parks win was pretty legitimate when he came and ran second in the Jerome. And I think you're going to get every bit of that 10 to 1, just given these are really not household name connections with uh, Alfredo Velasquez and Anthony Salgado. So Smart Up's a horse that I think could really uh, get overlooked and has a big shot in here. I love the pick. Uh, very excited for this race this weekend. As we said, the... Withers, we have 10 points available for the Derby Trail, uh, one and one-eighths a mile at Aqueduct Saturday afternoon. Going to be wet, going to be cold. We'll see what happens. Uh, two other Kentucky Derby prep races this weekend, so stay tuned. And uh, we'll be back with our next picks for the Holy Bowl.